Welcome to Tavern Archery. I'm Johannes von Hammersbach, and after a day on the archery field, we come into the tavern, grab a pint, sit down, and chat about all things target archery. Prost. All right, now I'm sitting with uh, Baron Colin Maxwell from the Kingdom of Atlantia, uh, Deputy Earl Marshal for Target Archery. I'm your host, Johannes Hans Hammersbach. Kingdom of Atlantia has specific guidelines for target archery events to make sure that uh, each event is a safe event for all family, all members, and, and non-members wanting to uh, participate. Can you take a moment and uh, share uh, what those guidelines are? Yeah, just roughly the guidelines are, are all designed to make it a safe, fun event. Um, the, each individual event will have a uh, marshal in charge, and that marshal will usually set up the event. It mm -hmm. could be as simple as a couple targets to moving targets, you know, uh, multiple stations. Uh, there's different venues we do, but we always adhere to the the safety guidelines of, of uh, how much backstop, how far it is before, um, you know, you want to have at least 100 yards to shoot. and Right. And Be aware of your target and what's beyond it for what's additional beyond safety. The target. And right. we'll have areas marked out so that people don't go strolling through the target area. Um, you'll have marshals to be watching for that kind of thing. And some of the important rules about our events are, and anytime we're shooting archery, is anyone can call a hold. It doesn't have to be the marshal. So if anybody sees something unsafe or something happening that shouldn't be happening, uh, they can call a hold. And we'll find out what happened and everybody stops shooting and everybody knows to stop shooting. You don't shoot your last arrow just because you have it on the, on the string. An inspecting marshal, unstrung. The marshal will take the bow, and what he's looking for at first are any cracks, any uh, separation in the bow itself. That's um, what I'm looking for right now, or any signs of separation in the limb, or any cracks that might show up. Also what I'll do is I want to take and look and see if the bow is straight. After, after I inspect the bow, I'll inspect the bow string itself. Sorry. Okay. What I'm looking for on bow string is are there any strands on this string that's broken? Unfortunately, this bow would fail because of a broken string. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. This would fail this bow. Now, if the archer has another bow string, he can replace the string and we can continue with the inspection. If he has another string, the bow passes. I've already checked the string. We have one. It's in, it has inspe passed inspection. I'm going to take this one and say you can do with it what you want, but do not use it to string your bow. I would hand, him, hand the bow back. He would replace the string, and then he would... The archer has just strung his bow with the new string. Now he presents it back to the marshal to finish the inspection while it is strong and again what I am looking for now is now that the bow is actually under pressure I'm looking to see if any cracks have shown up or if any separation have shown up since there's more pressure on the bow and it, it it is good okay this point the bow has passed its inspection and I'm going to turn I'm going to ha uh, hand the bow back to the archer and we will have him 
draw the bow back slowly and let it go forward. All right, at this point, let it go slowly forward. At this point, I'm going to tell the archer this bow is too heavy for him to pull because he got almost to his chin and he starts shaking. This is a sign of a bow that's a little too heavy for this person to use. It can be a safety issue. He could hurt himself or someone else. Since the archer realized the, his, the long bow that he had was too heavy for him to draw, he asked about loaner bows. We just, we had loaner bows. We have one that's a, about a 40 pound loaner bow. And we're going to go through some of the inspection again. It has been inspected before. But what I want to do now is I want to check the archer with the bow again. So what I'm, go I'm going to have him again draw the bow back slowly and bring it forward slowly. Okay. Now, you see he did not shake. This bow is a good weight for him or her. That way he's not going to get hurt. He's not going to hurt someone else. I need an arrow. I'm going to borrow one of his arrows. And one of the, I'm going to, my back's going to be to him. Okay. One other thing we're going to do is we're going to check his draw length with the arrow that he has. Okay. Draw it back. Okay. This is good. Okay. Let it go forward. And what I will also do is, depending on how many arrows he has, I'm going to draw a few arrows out of his quiver and give him a, a, an inspection themselves. What I'm looking for is making sure everything is tight, still attached, checking to see if any of them may have a little bit of a crack to them. Because we don't want arrows exploding while they are being released from the bow. Okay, all your arrows are good. Thank you. Okay, okay we went over inspection of long bows, recurves. We do one other type of bow, which is the crossbow, which is a little bit different inspection than the regular bow. Here I have. <laughs> a nice long crossbow. Okay, on inspecting the crossbow, what we're looking for is we're checking the limb, the, the, the prod. The, this part of the bow is called the prod. And what we're looking for is, is it loose? Are there any cracks in it? And then what also we will check, depending on the type of crossbow, we will check how the prod is connected to the stock. Are the, are the strings tight? Are they coming undone? Are there any strings that are broken? Uh, you have some that are held to, on with wedges. Are the wedges in tight? Are they loose? Okay. We will check the trigger. And what we also do is we'll grab an old bowstring, depending on the type of crossbow. What we are checking for here is we will insert the string as if we were cocking the bow or spanning the bow. What I'm looking for here is to see if everything's tight and it's not going to prematurely fire when it's spanned. Can you see it? Okay, once I have it tight, what I'm going to do is see if there's any resistance in the trigger that just fired or not. This, this one fires fine. It's good to go. Okay. What can a person do to become a target archery marshal so they can be there and help and support an event uh, for wherever they may be in our kingdom? Well, throughout the kingdom, we have uh, 
archery marshals who are warranted to teach the archery marshal class. Mm -hmm. And so you attend a class, usually about two and a half hours or so, depending on how many are in it, how many questions, that kind of thing. Um, and we cover primarily safety, but also, you know, how to run an event, how to set it up, um, what to, what to look out for, um, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, but it's primarily safety oriented. The, uh, we'll go into, um, the inspection of the bows, what to look for, how to tell if a bow is cracked, how to, how to do your inspection so that you can find those things. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then we'll go into, you know, the various commands that you have to know, uh, which by the time you're ready for a martial class, you pretty much know things like hold and, um, right. that kind of thing. But, uh, and into the, the safety margins, you know, the safety boundaries uh, for your archery range so that nobody wanders in when they shouldn't, um, how to retrieve arrows, um, what your job is as the archery marshal, which is primarily safety. Um, and that's, that's pretty much, once you do that, you've got your class out of the way, you'll have a, a paper that will you have to do three events, only one of which can be in your own uh, barony. So uh, you're, you're now at MIT, a marshal in training to become a target archery marshal. Right. You're now at MIT. And uh, as a marshal in training, you've got to attend three events and get signed off that I did my job um, and I know what I'm doing by the marshal in charge of that event. Uh, you should also have, and this is, is pretty important, when you go into the class, you should have a mentor, somebody that can you can go to and ask questions about archery and about uh, uh, safety and that kind of thing, how to inspect bows, um, and that'll be on the paper. And uh, and then if you're having trouble, you've got somebody to go to and say, okay, I need to, I don't understand how to inspect, say, a crossbow. And the mentor will be an archery marshal, and they can show you how to inspect a crossbow. Um, but, uh, so you do your three events and you get signed off and, uh, and then you turn in, get online and, uh, and say, I've got my paperwork and you send it in and, and, and then I'll warrant you as an archery marshal. Your archery marshal warrant will last for three years and then it needs to be renewed. And, uh, you renew it by taking another class or going to an event and attending the archery marshals um, uh, meeting. Um, because primarily, you know how to be a marshal, and primarily what you're doing is, is you're, you know, what new has come up. And it's um, good to share information with other marshals and share experiences with they may have come across at their events, and that information shared across the kingdom will make, much, will make a much safer event for everyone. Exactly, which is why you have to do three events, only one of which can be your own kingdom, um, not in your own kingdom, in your own barony. The other two have to be um, somewhere in the kingdom, and it could be in Penzik. Penzik is a great place to go be a uh, marshal in charge. You'll see more bows there in a day than you'll see in six weeks of shooting in your own barony. And in your own barony, it's always the same shooters. It's always the same people. Um, and so you, you tend to get complacent. You know, you know, I don't need to look at this shooter because he's really good. He knows what mm -hmm. he's doing. He's been a marshal for 50 years. And, but when you go to new baronies and you've got new archers coming up, you don't know any of them. You have to watch them. You, have to you don't know their them. habits. You don't know what their styles are. You don't know what, right. what their attention, what their focus is, what their shooting uh, capabilities are, what their shooting levels are. And when you're doing your MIT stuff, you really want to learn how to do an event, which means that you show up early, help set up, and stay late and help take down, um, and then help run the event during yeah. during the uh, the actual shooting. I, I um, remember going through my martial and training process, and I really enjoyed doing that because I really got an opportunity to to meet the marshals in charge. I uh, learned a lot from them. Uh, 
also meeting and, and learning from other marshals who were there themselves and enjoying the shoot and they they oh you're there MIT and hey come over here let me talk to you about this let me show you this I mean and they gave me great information so it really is is a, is a team effort as being a target archery marshal across the kingdom and it felt very very warm and welcoming and I enjoyed learning from all those who I came across at the various events. Yeah, I've never seen a, a good archer or a marshal that if somebody asked for help, they didn't just give it to them. Um, if they're shooting on the line and you're having problems or you want to know about something, if they'll ask them, they'll jump in and help. Um, as a marshal running the line, you shouldn't be teaching because if you're teaching, you're only paying attention to one person. And so what I'll do if I'm on a line and somebody's having trouble, and uh, that way I can continue to monitor every time if they can help that person, and, and they do. Mm -hmm.